I got a request from a friend of mine, Steve from California, who was our Michael Jordan of our high school, now runs a very, very successful transportation company. By the way, on a side note, Steve Talene, we are thrilled to hear the great news about you, Talene. Uh, very, very exciting. Can't wait to have dinner with you guys and celebrate when you guys come out here. Anyways, let me get right into it. Steve said, Pat, I want to talk about, I'd like you to do a video on how to start a project and how to finish a project. You know, a lot of us as entrepreneurs, we have ideas. Oh, what about we do this? What about we do that? What about we do this? And then we come out with projects and either they, we spend money and halfway, we put 200 hours or 40 hours and nothing gets done. And then we're irritated and we're frustrated. So what do we do to systematize for getting projects done? And I'm going to try to do my best to explain it in a way that helps you get better at project management. First of all, keep a couple things in mind when you think about projects. Rule number one to keep in mind is 90% of projects that we come up with, they're worthless. And you need to be able to, um, how do I describe this, is detach yourself from the project or the idea and not take it personal. Because not all great ideas and projects are worth you're putting a lot of time into it. That's just something you gotta keep in mind. Now, there's nothing wrong with constantly coming up with ideas. You want the machine to be working, but you also gotta understand that not everything is gonna be the next big thing that you come up with. And you don't need all of them. You gotta realize that typically, you know, you hear when people say, well, you know, it just didn't work. I tried this, I tried that. You know, you can fail a thousand times. It takes one big victory as an entrepreneur to be considered a very, very, you know, established entrepreneur. You don't need to have all victories. One big victory, you know, plummets thousands of failures. So don't worry about that. You're not looking to have all projects being big. Second thing to be thinking about is looking at everything. When I think about ideas and projects, I think about bites. So look at it like this. Start, middle, finish. Everything in your mind that you want to do something is normally going to have a one, two, three. I either like three steps or I like five steps. There's something magical about three steps or five steps. So one, we do this. Two, we do this. Three, we do this. Start, middle, finish. Okay, start, middle, finish. So think about steps when you're thinking about ideas and we'll cover five steps here on exactly how we go about projects and different ideas that we have. And then the next one is as you're writing out your ideas or projects is being able to prioritize and know, look, this is a great idea, but this is not a short term idea. This is a five years from now. This is a 10 years from now. This is three years from now. This is a year from now. This is six months. Let's revisit this three months from now and just setting it aside on a note. You can have a phone with a lot of ideas in here. You can have a, a, a idea folder to save with all the ideas that you have, which everybody ought to have, or a folder that you have that you write all your ideas that's private to you. And then you revisit when the times are. So let me get right into it. There's five steps. Step number one when it comes down to ideas is the actual ideation phase, okay, that leads to a project. So let's explain. Yeah, so you get together with a mastermind. And a mastermind to me is a group of three to five people. The purpose of the mastermind getting together is simply to think out loud and process issues together. Step number one is ideation, masterminding and processing with three to five people. What do you do when you get together with uh, 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 the ideas, questions? For instance, what's the next idea that we can come out with that take, can take the business to the next level, hypothetically? Uh, what's the next thing I need to do to improve my brand? What's the next thing we need to do? What can we come up with to do? What's the next thing we can... It's constant ideas that you're coming up with, right? And as you're sitting there, the next question becomes, is out of all these five ideas, which of them has the highest ROI for the time we're going to put into a rate of return, uh, re return on investment uh, on the time we're going to put into it? So we got these 20 ideas we came up with. No, definitely no, 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 no. Okay, this one's going to be big. This one's going to be big. Which one's going to be bigger? I think this one. Let's look at this one and then boom, you spend time with that one, right? Um, during the part of ideation phase, uh, you got to ask the questions on the return. And then also, do we have the resources for this idea? Somebody may say, I remember one time we were in year one of starting PHP, a financial firm. And I rented this house in uh, Lake Tahoe. It was the most expensive property rent in Lake Tahoe. It was a 19,000 square foot house. It was cemented floors that were heated. Ridiculous. We had a great time. And I said, ideas. And one of the guys said, I think we need to do a halftime Super Bowl commercial. And I said, great idea. I loved it. Everybody's like, it's a great idea. How much does it cost? Three and a half million. Guys, we don't have three and a half million to do a Super Bowl commercial. So one is the ideas and the projects. Then it's the resources. Do we have the resources 
for the idea. Sometimes you have ideation and somebody could tell you the craziest thing and say, we need to go buy Amazon. It'll be great. Okay, we can't afford 70, you know, $200 billion to buy Amazon. So you need to know the resources that we have as well, okay? Then the people who give me ideas and feedback, sometimes if I'm doing an ideation meeting and somebody that's always coming up with ideas and uh, their credibility for ideas is not that high, I don't give that much value for the ideas. Sometimes a person that may not say a lot, but they say one thing, but every time they do, it's that powerful. It's also knowing who to take ideas uh, from. That's a very important thing to be keep, keeping in, in mind uh, as you're doing that. Another thing I do is uh, I like to uh, recruit devil's advocates when I'm doing ideation. You know how you always have somebody that's very annoying that always shuts down all ideas? Uh, and if you read the book Inside the Tornado, you will know what's he called the Inside the Tornado? The pragmatic. pragmatic. And then you have the, uh, uh, um, you know, the complete opposite. Pragmatic is the visionary type, the idea guy. But the pragmatic is always, I don't know, what about this, 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 this? And as much as you, the idea person, doesn't want that person, you need that person. Uh, Steve could tell you, you know, many of my friends, could, hey, Pat, what do you think about us doing this idea? And ta, 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 ta. they'll come to me, they'll get, and I'll say, have you thought about this? Have you done this? Have you done that? Have you looked at this? Have you researched this? Have you talked about, have you talked about this company, this company? What other companies are doing this? What other companies are doing this? Look at their company. I got a call from somebody that says, I want to start a detail, uh, a mobile uh, detailing business, et cetera, et cetera, like in Uber type. And now who's done it? Who's done it? Let's come. We met in contact with the CEO. We met with the CEO. It's former Italian guys. We sat down with them, found out what they're doing, how much the business, how many. It's just finding that part out. And then you're like, well, do we want to put $3 million? Do you want to get the round? This guy's already on round three. Do we want to go compete with this? Is this something you want to do? Are you fully committed to this? Are you? So then you're getting into that part. You need a devil's advocate. This is not a power of positive thinking. Uh, of having somebody sit there and tell you, oh, awesome, let's go get it. No, 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 no. That person that gets go get it, they're not putting the money. If the person that says, yeah, let's go do it, if they're willing to fund 100%, yeah, let's go do it. If you're that optimistic, fund it. Let's go do it. But if you're not the one putting the money, I need somebody to tell me that's not afraid to say, I don't think this is a good idea because of that, 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 that. Man, I don't like the shutdown, but he's right. We move on. Now, if you firmly believe in that idea, I like the good argument. I like the good going back. Ta, 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 ta. Man, he's got a point. Nope. You're right. Let's skip this idea, right? So you got to be able to understand that part. So first thing is ideation. I'll, at the end, I'll give you an example on how one would look like. Ideation. Second thing is initiation. So it's five eyes we'll go through. Ideation, then initiation. So let's just say now you have an idea that you like. And you say, we have the resources, this could be big, we like the ROI, it could really help the company, it could really help the brand, let's move with this. Then it's initiation. So what's initiation? The first things I think about is, who are the people that can be involved in this project that can help us out, okay? This person's good in this, that person's good in this, this person, we make a list of names of people. So this person knows that person, this person worked over here, this person did this, this person that, you put names, right? Then do we do it ourselves or do we outsource? So. Do I go buy a standalone of this and leverage the software, or do we go and design the software ourselves and spend two and a half, three years? And if you have read the book, Inside the Tornado, they say if you have to build or buy, I mean 99% of the time it's a buy, is what it is. And I know entrepreneurs wanna own everything. No, 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 we have to own it, we have to own it, we have to own every single thing. Um, Look, sometimes great partnerships, like if you look at Facebook when they first got started, first, first, first they got started, they were shopping Google and they were shopping uh, Microsoft. They're even a $5 million company at that time. They went and signed a big contract with, uh, 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 with, uh, with uh, um, who are the companies that Google? They signed a big contract with Google, big contract with Google. Their revenues doubled. Microsoft was annoyed that Facebook didn't. Then Facebook went and signed the same exact contract with Microsoft. So now they have two partners they didn't use the resources to design what these guys already had. They're making a ton of the money because of partnership, but their vision is bigger. They leverage both companies, Google and Microsoft. Now they're competing with them. They're valued at $300 billion company. So sometimes it's knowing that, do I have to go out and do this myself or has somebody already done this that I can go out and use that software? And then two, three, five, ten 10 years from now, if I need to buy the code, I can ask them to buy the code so it increases the value of the company. You may do that. And if not, you don't need to do it because it was not the worth what you thought it was going to be worth. Once you thought I'd know that in the earlier part. So uh, I'm, I know I'm thinking fast and I'm speaking fast, but I hope you're tracking on what I'm saying here with that part. 
Who can I leverage that's done this before? Somebody's done it before and maybe it didn't work for them. It did work. Let's initiate a contact with them and have a meeting and have a call with them. Great. Um, uh, another one is, um, uh, if we do do this, how long will this take for it to get done? I'll go a little bit more into the deadlines later on. <clears throat> how can we break it down into a handful of different processes that we'll have if we do this? Okay, if we're doing a project that uh, we want to go out and come out with a software, what's number one? Number one, we got to do this. Number two, we got to do this. Three, four, five. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Let's start one, then two, then three. Who's taking care of one? Who's taking care of two? Who's three? Who's four? They need delegate responsibilities to them on what they need to be doing, right? And everyone has certain deadlines on the responsibilities that are given to them. And then how do we pl uh, apply the project when it's finalized? You're thinking, about, okay, when the project is finalized, what are we going to do with it? What kind of a place can we use this at? Who are we going to launch it? Are we going to do this? Are we going to... You'll think about those things. This is purely initiation phase. The next phase is instruction, uh, which instruction phase is start the process by instructing who does what. You've already decided you're doing this. After the initiation phase, like, we're doing this. So we have ideation, excitement, initiation. Guys... I think this is serious. We're thinking about doing this. And what if we do this? Who we can do this? Da, 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 da. Then it's like, guys, we're doing this. We made a decision a week. We slept, you know, slept on it, took a week. We thought about it. We cracked every single thing that this is going to work or it's not going to work. We're doing it instruction. Here's breaking into different bytes. That's going to go this. Then it's going to go this. Then you're processing the whole thing to break into different bytes. And then you figure it out. Here's what we're doing. We're moving forward. Okay? Responsibility is all given. Five is inspection. So now you have a product. So that's being built. So let's just say it's being broken out into five different phases of developing software. One part is done. Like, let's test it out. It's working. Okay, great. We're looking at this. We're inspecting it. Oh, there's a glitch. What's this all about? Why did that come up? Okay, message. Why did that come up? Message. Why did this come up? Message. Why when I did this, it didn't send the email that I was supposed to. It wasn't doing this. There's an issue here, right? So it's constantly tracking and advancing where you're at um, when you're inspecting everything. And is there's constant accountability, constant emails. We're here. We're here. This is what happened. This is where we're at here. And if you have like a um, different setups you can use to know exactly who's working on what, different projects, you can do that as well. And that's implementation. Implement implementation at this time, you're doing a testing, final testing and exec execution. But in the implementation phase, you may do a soft launch. With somebody small to use it, beta testing, some call it soft launch, whatever you want to call it. Someone's going to test it and they say, oh man, we were having problems in this area. Okay, great. We were having problems with this area. Okay, well, we didn't know that. Okay, we we're having problems in this. Okay, no problem. That's good. We were having problems in this area and then we fix it, right? And then after the testing is done, when you're implementing, then you launch it. And then you have a real meeting on how to launch it. So if it's a product you're selling, what are we going to be our price point? What's the 60-40? Are we going 60-40 split, sales, all this other stuff where you're talking about launching? Are we going to launch this product in a market? Are we going to use a vendor how to sell it? That's a whole different episode I'll do. But your strategy is more on the launching part of this product that you have, right? So now, knowing that, I went through a lot of stuff fairly quickly. Let's break one down together. Fair enough? Let's just say you're sleeping, you wake up on Sunday, and you say, I want to write a book. Okay? I want to write a book. You want to write a book? I want to write a book. Okay. Step number one is what? Ideation. So what's the first thing you do? You sit there and you grab a sheet of paper and you start writing, uh, title would be this. No, what about if I write about this? No, I can write about this. What am I an expert in? I can write about this. And you have ideation with your wife maybe. Maybe your husband. Maybe your boyfriend, girlfriend. Maybe it's your best friend, dad, somebody that works with you. What do you think I should write? Have you thought about writing it on this? Have you thought about writing it on that? You always say, what do I talk about the most? You always talk about this. What do people come to me for advice? And they, you always talk about this. Oh, man, that's great. So now you have 20 different ideas on books, okay? Then you go and say, what's timely? What should I write now, okay? What is a good timely book right now? What is a book I shouldn't write right now? What is a book I haven't earned the right to talk about yet? I know a lot about it, but I haven't earned the right to talk about it. Maybe you want to write a book on dating or you want to write a book on you know, how to become successful, but you're not successful. You don't want to write that book. It doesn't make any sense for you to write that book, right? I know a lot of people do it. We have a lot of books of people that write book on how to be successful. And the most success they've ever had is they've just been a consultant. They've made a hundred grand a year. How to become a millionaire. It just doesn't make any sense. The moment people find out, so you're, at, you're processing that part on the ideation side. Great. So then you ask, do I write this book now or do I write this book later? So out of the 20 book titles, you may say, I love these five book titles. Okay? This one I'm going to write five years from now. This one I'm going to write 10 years from now. This one I'm going to write 20 years from now. This one I'm going to write a year from now. This one I'm going to write right now. Great. 
Okay, number one was ideation. Number two, initiation. Okay, let's just say I'm gonna write this book. Let's just say I'm gonna write this book. What do I need? Okay, I need a literary agent that's gonna help me with a publisher. So let me first see if the idea is even good if I wanna publish it. Am I gonna self publish? Am I gonna publish? Am I just gonna do Kindle? How much is my price point? Who am I gonna sell it through? Is it gonna be an Amazon book? Is it gonna be a Penguin book? What am I gonna do? Let me talk to somebody who's been there before who can help me with the publishing site. So let me hire a consultant. I get on the uh, uh, internet, I find somebody and I talk, I'm thinking about writing a book, what do you think I should do? Self-publish or this? And they'll ask you, how many Facebook fans do you have? You know, how many Twitter followers do you have? How much is your following? What's your platform? If you were to come out with a book right now, how many people do you know automatically are gonna buy your book? Every question they'll ask you is purely business. Then you say, Shh, I'm not gonna write a book. Then it's telling you, you are not yet in implementation instruction phase, right? So your editor, your digital marketing agency, your researcher, this is like you're putting the initiation. If I were to write the book, I'm going to do this. Instruction. At this point, you're doing it. You have decided you're going to do this thing. So you're going to break down the books on how to write a book. Okay, let me write the book. How do I write a book? One, I already have my title of the book. Okay. Now, within the title, for instance, let's just say if the title of the book is How to Become a Great Real Estate Agent. Okay. So then you have to break down the chapters, prospecting, why are you doing real estate, marketing, branding yourself, uh, which size houses to sell, 250 to 500,000 or half a million and up or a million and up, okay? Do I partner with somebody? Who do I put my real estate license with? How much money do I spend on advertising? So then you have your chapters. So you make a list of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 chapters. When you do 50 chapters, then you go from 50 chapters to 15 chapters, because how to do is 50 chapters, 35 belong within the 10 or 15 chapters. Okay, then you have that part. Then the next part you talk about is stories. What stories do you have? Okay, what stories can you use? Stories from other real estate agents, you put it in there, right? Then you have quotes you're gonna use. Then you have research that you're gonna use to validate how the real estate economy is gonna do, real estate's gonna do in the next 10 years, and how it's a great time to be a real estate agent then articles to validate what you're saying. So that's instruction. You've already committed you're going to do this. Number four is inspection. You write a chapter, you send it to the editor, you reread, looks good. Next chapter, editor, reread, looks good. Next chapter, editor, reread, looks good. Then it's implementation. Book's done. You have a product. You ask a handful of people that you respect to read the book for you. And they say, I like it. I will change this. I don't like this part. There was mistakes here. What about this? Then you have another editing that you do. Then you have another final editing that you do. And then you have a book, self-publish, so publish, or you go out there and do your marketing. How do you launch it? Do, do, do you do a soft launch? Who are your customers? Who are you going to target? Who are you going to market? That's how you, pro you start the project. So if you take those five processes, ideation, initiation, instruction, in, uh, impl uh, uh, um, instruction, inspection, then implementation, you will generally have a system where you can use for any project you're working on whether it's a software, whether it's a book, whether it's a new product, whether it's a new system, whether it's whatever you want to talk about that you're doing, you can use this exact system in any aspect of your business to uh, put together and come out with a project that you're starting and knowing which ones are not even worth your time and how to actually finish projects. And uh, remember that one of the biggest things with projects are deadlines. When I say deadlines, I like everyone to have deadlines. Everybody has deadlines, and not one deadline, many, many different deadlines, and everyone has many different deadlines, including yourself. What do you guys need from me by when? So a big part of finishing projects is deadlines, and you being able to hold everybody accountable, including yourself, to making sure that project gets done. So Steve, you asked for it, a few other people did as well, but today we put into video, and at this point, Mari, why don't you throw me my favorite pillow uh, uh, here. Hey. Uh, we have a goal of getting to 100,000 subs by August 31st, and I need your help. I need you to help us get there to 100,000 subs. We get a lot of love from many of you that follow this channel. I need you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet, and get everybody you know to subscribe to this channel. We believe we're the best channel on uh, YouTube for entrepreneurship, but we need 100,000 subs by August 31st because I'm launching something very, very major in the next couple months that you will know about. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And if you watch this video on a completely different website, you can always go to patrickbaydavid.com, boom, to see the video and subscribe to our newsletter. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.